Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's uh, fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Date um, will take to the 13th of September and we'll be able to extend up beyond that with the CFS and ECM ensembles because they run to around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFS B2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That will get us well into the last stages of September, almost a month then. So I'll get time back for you. In a second, just to say that first video to see was our 6M upload with Ultra Reads Weekend Forecast and the ECM WF 42 Day Slash 6 Weeks. Okay, so please uh, like, share. We have a bit of a laugh on that one, by the way. So please like, share, subscribe on the vids. Uh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, for dinner. Right, I say thank you so much to my good friend Connor. Connor Harper gave uh, gave me Gasworthies a super thanks on uh, yesterday, ten to fourteen day. -er. So uh, thank you so much, Connor, for your uh, super thanks. That's amazing. It's incredible. Thank you so much, my friend, for dear Matt Connor, also a channel member, of course, for Gasworthies. Thank you so much for the support. If you'd like to give a uh, super thanks for Gasworthies, all you need to do is click the thanks button. Underneath all of the videos on the uh, on on YouTube, and uh, and yeah, you can give a give a donation. It'll sort of highlight your comment, as you can see there. Flag it up, uh, and uh, and we'll pin it. I'll pin I'll pin the comment to the top of the comments, and also you get a shout out in the videos as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Thank you so much to Connor and to all uh, of our super thankers and super chatters in live and whatnot. It is amazing. It is incredible. The support that you give to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Connor Harper. Uh, Connor uh, actually uh, created a countdown clock for uh, Gals Weber. So we're we're on winter updates eve, of course, today. This is winter updates eve, and uh, look at this. Uh, Connor Connor created this a few days ago. So Gals Weber's winter update 2023. Uh, begin in 19 hours, less than one day. Oh my goodness, great to me. 34 uh, minutes and 20 seconds uh, when we shall be in uh, on Winter Updates Day. You know, so thank you so, so much to Connor. Thank you so much, Connor, for the uh, countdown. And yeah, we're going to be uh, doing the, uh, of course, the uh, first Winter Update tomorrow. Not at 10 a.m. though. We're going to be premiering at 8 p.m. Uh, and it's going to be amazing, and uh, I hope you all enjoy it. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not sure whether it's been a long time since I've done the long range, so I'm not sure whether I'm quite going to be up to it or what's going to happen, uh, whether I've forgotten how to do it and that. So uh, it's going to be interesting. It will be interesting to see how it all uh, works out. Um, that'll be coming up tomorrow, of course. More about that at the end of the video. Right, let's have a look at what's going on in the tropical Atlantic, man. So two tropical storms uh, now. We have got Danielle, as we uh, talked about yesterday. We've also got tropical storm Earl just there. So uh, Earl is currently giving maximum sustained winds of 40 miles per hour with a middle central pressure of 1,005 millibars. And Earl is moving west northwest was at 13 miles per hour. Clicking on Earl... And going there, we can see that this is forecast to remain as a tropical storm through to the second half of next week. So, composition of Earl, and it's just here, uh, and then Earl goes northwards by the look of it, ending up somewhere in that area by the time we get through to Wednesday and Thursday, still as a tropical storm. And then we've also got Danielle, of course. Danielle is currently giving maximum state winds of 70 miles per hour, so not that far now from uh, category one. Hurricane with 990 millibars, and Danielle, Danielle's moving very slowly at just one mile per hour. Looking on Danielle, we can see that uh, this is going to become a hurricane imminently, so it should become a hurricane at some point today, uh, and then we'll move north officials in that direction, okay, but by... Uh, by sort of middle, second half next week, it's in that rough area. If we go uh, just here, we can see how strong uh, Daniel is going to become. So, been downgraded a little bit. Yesterday, Bay was predicting Daniel to reach Category 2 hurricane status, now staying as a Category 1 hurricane uh, with maximum sustained winds in a couple of days of 85 miles per hour. That keeps Daniel as a Category 1 hurricane um so uh, yeah you know uh significant developments in the tropical atlantic with these tropical storms and our first uh, hurricane of season two and we should wait and see whether anything happens from here 
Uh, I wish you see, we'll take in form of course, it's CT Page at the UK Met, you know, way back to 1659. So, uh, CT oldest and most reliable temperature record on Earth, of course, although the further back you go, the more unreliable it comes. Now, if we come down to train train chart, just to refresh a page, we still have not got August fin finalised number. I'm not sure what the delay is um, this month, but uh, there is a delay getting August final number. We know it's going to be in the 18s. It will be our first 18 Celsius CT August since 2003. 18.3. Uh, it'll probably be ahead of that. So it'll actually be the hottest August since 1997, um, I think, which came in at 19.0. be the hottest August since 1997. The first 18 Celsius CT August since 2003. But we don't have a number yet. We're still waiting. Uh, for that, but moving on to September, so September's number is going to be placed just there, of course, eventually, we've got to get August number first, though, um, so uh, we had a very, very hot September last year, of course, CT 16 degrees, 16.0, really warm uh, September uh, last year, um, September has actually been quite variable, though, over recent years, I have to say. So, um, before that, like, 2020 had a CT of 14.0, not that far from average. 2019, 14.3, again, not particularly warm. 2018 was our last pretty cool uh, or, um, September at 13.7. 2017, 13.6, again, that was quite a coolish uh, month. Very hot September in uh, 2016 at 16.1. And then 2015 was our last genuinely cool to cold September with CT of just 12.7. Before that, very warm September at 15.1, 2014. Then a cooler September at 13.7, 2013. Very cool September in 13, uh, in uh, 2012, 13.0. Very warm September in 2011. Uh, cooler September in uh, 2010, and so on. So September has been more variable. It's got a reputation of being like a really hot month um, a lot of the time. Uh, in recent years. But actually, when you go back through the data, you see that September has become uh, quite bad. We did have a run of very warm Septembers back in the 1990s to early 2000s. So, um, those warm Septembers started uh, around 1997, really warm and cyclonic, 14.2, 14.8, 15.6, 14.7, cooler in 2001, and then 14.4, 14.3, 14.9, 15.2, 16.8. We had a run of quite warm Septembers through the late 90s to early to mid 2000s, culminating in that very, very hot September in 2006, the phenomenal CT of uh, 16.8. Uh, but since 2006, actually, September has tended to be uh, more variable. The last time I had a very cold September was a long time ago. By very cold, I'm talking CT under 12 degrees. And that was in 1986, which had a September CT of 11 Point three. That was a really cold, uh, really cold uh, September and start to autumn 1986. Strangely, the rest of the autumn was actually relatively mild, um, but, you know, real, really, really cool, uh, cold September in uh, 1986. Um, so, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens with uh, September 2022. We're already starting off quite warm, so I'd imagine it will probably be another warmer, warmer than average month. The question is, uh, how warm will it be? Uh, if you want a cold winter, we saw from last year's uh, re-analysis that uh, you want to keep the CET under 15 degrees. If you get a September CET in the 14th, you can get any kind of winter afterwards. It can be mild, it can be cold, it, you know, any kind of winter can follow a September CT of uh, under 15 degrees. But if you go over 15, um, particularly if you go into sort of upper 15s and into 16s, then it's nearly always uh, uh, curtains if you want to <laughs> got a colder than average uh, winter. So we wait and see. We wait and see where it's all going to go and where it's all going to pan out. And uh, and uh, and we'll keep you informed, of course. But the first thing you've got to do is get August number. I'm not sure what the delay is in getting that number for August, but hopefully um, the folks at Hadley will give it to us soon. These are the GFS upper air temperature and temptation ensembles the next couple of weeks. We're going to heck some today. So the red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Hexum. We're starting off above average at the moment. It is quite warm 
with the southerly winds that's coming around adding low pressure to the west southwest country. General cool down taking place as we go from the first week into the second week of September. Nothing particularly cool, but certainly cooling down a bit and going closer to average. Again, as I've been serving more um, significant precipitation so, uh, than temperature, so over the next week it does look as though it's going to be pretty wet actually. Some quite large precipitation spikes there for Hexham as we go through the next week. And even like into the second week of September and the middle part of the month, overall it looks uh, a bit on the wet of an average side. So it does look as though it's going to be quite uh, a wet sort of first half to September anyway. And plenty of showers, long as well as rain, and possibly even thunderstorms to come. Temperature anomalies on the 30th and 11th of September going to be above average. Precipitation anomalies from the 30th and 11th of September going to be wetter than normal in most areas. Still a little bit drier than average for northern Scotland, a little bit drier than average for northern parts of Wales, but most areas are coming out wetter than normal. Latest wind from that from Earth North School. Next shows that we've got low pressure dominating the weather now. The low pressure is centred just to the west of Ireland there and uh, will be throwing up these quite warm southerly southwesterly winds but will also be throwing up bands of showers and longer spells uh, of rain as well. That area of low pressure just there or that circulation is uh, tropical storm soon to be Hurricane Danielle and uh, if we pull this around and zoom in uh, you can see that, uh, yeah, Danielle looks quite significant now. The very, very clear and defined eye That's, and circulation around that eye. So um, that's going to become a Category 1 hurricane imminently. If we pull this down to here, we can also see Earl as well. There he is. There's Earl. Uh, just to the east of the Leeward Islands, I think. Doesn't look quite as powerful yet as Danielle. And uh, we wait and see what's going to happen with Tropical Storm Earl, of course, in the coming days. OK, let's show you, let's show you some chart data. Remember, this is how you can make your run. It's looking a bit light on Tuesday. Low pressure just around southwest, throwing up further showers in hot longer spells of rain. And then low pressure will be in control through uh, the second half of the week as well. Moving in over the country, eventually bringing increasingly unsettled weather into eastern areas in the second half of the week. And then moving out into the North Sea by next weekend putting in this cooler north or northeast wind so although it starts off quite warm next week temperatures will drop later on in the week uh and uh and we'll pull in something a bit cooler from the north and from the northeast uh i can't looks like back getting low pressure to our west and southwest throwing up further bands of showers on as well as rain in the middle part of the week, and then ICON moving away to the east as we go through the end of the week and weekend. That pulls in a rather cooler northerly northeast wind by next weekend. We try to get a bit of ridging going over at Scandinavia, but there's still quite a bit of low pressure in the Atlantic, so we will have to wait and see where things go from that. With the high pressure of Scandinavia to take over, does dry up all these areas of low pressure containing these uh, the remains of these tropical systems. Um, would, they, would they come our way? We would have to wait and see about that. Uh, GFS midnight run again below pressure from west southwest on Tuesday, bringing plenty of showery conditions. Then that low pressure as a trough moves in across the country for the second half of the week, and plenty of showers, longer spells of rain too. Uh, by Saturday next week, we've got Daniela just there, and this is Earl, I believe, just here. Below pressure is really way to our east, and that's pulling in those rather cooler winds from the north and from the northeast. Now, what happens with Danielle and Earl? They sort of get together and form one area of low pressure, quite a deep area of low pressure as well. This is Monday, the 12th of September, quite a deep area of low pressure. Contain the remains of Danielle and Earl heading our way. And uh, yeah, we get a direct hit actually from the remains of those two uh, storms by the 13th of uh, September. They tend deep low pressure west of Ireland, moving in, bringing no doubt bouts of heavy rain and strong winds as well. And then the rest of Jeffers midnight range is very unsettled, really with low pressure, never far away. Uh, so cool, showery, outbreaks of rain, showers in between, and uh, winds in from a uh, west or northwesterly direction. So very unsettled on the GFS midnight run. So we're going to Metro Sierra again today for the GFS 6Z. As uh, for some reason, 
at uh, beta, the uh, GFS 6 that hasn't uh, completely updated. Not sure what's gone wrong there, but never mind. We've got Meta Shield to go at. So, um, here we go then for, uh, for the open next week. Like, low pressure will be to Western Country, bringing showers, if not long spells of rain too. Now, the second half week, that low pressure will move in over the top of the country and then pull away to the east, bringing in a cooler north or northeasterly wind. Uh, as we get through the next weekend, we've got uh, Danielle. Uh, just there, that's the remains of Danielle, and that is the remains of Earl, just there. What does the GFS 6 there do with those? Let's have a look. So Danielle gets moved in as like a little area of low pressure, not all that impactful. Earl still waiting in the wings. Um, and we start to reach in high pressure ahead of Earl. So Earl stalls in the Atlantic, and that builds up this area of high pressure. This is a cool ridge, though, so don't look about and think that's getting us back to hot weather. That is actually a cool ridge of high pressure, because um, we bring, like, a northerly northeast ahead of that high, and then the anticyclone sits over the top of the country. And that will probably bring some quite cold nights in particular, I would have thought. So uh, that's the kind of thing that will lower the CT quite quickly, actually, that area of high pressure if it comes off and we start getting colder nights. So uh, we're getting to the time of year now where high pressure doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be over, overly warm. It depends on the nature of the ridge and where the uh, origins of the ridge are from. And that's quite a cool area of high pressure. If you enjoyed the video, then please think you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We're grinding to 14.4k subscribers. So please give us a sub to our friends and thank you subscribe as well. It's amazing, it's incredible. Thank you so much for doing that. We're on Winter Updates Eve, everybody. Uh, first, Winter 2022-2023 update will be released tomorrow. Let's have a GEM is looking again. Low pressure will be just to our west and southwest. We'll be bringing up on Tuesday, we'll bring up this warm southerly wind, but it will be unsettled. And then over into the second half of the week, uh, over into the weekend, we keep it a change more low pressure pulls eastwards. That brings in a cooler north northeasterly, but will still be showery. Up to day 10, high pressure takes over. Round ice. And again, that's quite a cool ridge, though. That brings the wind into the north or the northeast. So that's not going to be overly warm as we get to day 10, but it is setting down at that area of high pressure. And then the ECMWF, once again, with low pressure just out to our west, dragging up these southerly winds. It looks pretty warm, but also showery for the middle part of the week. And the low pressure sits over the top of the country as we get to the end of the week, being first showers along the bells rain. Next weekend, that low pressure gets taken to the east. High pressure builds around Green and Iceland. And we pull wind into a cool north or northeast, so we turn it drier but cooler next weekend. And then heading up toward day 10, we get a push of warmth from the southwest ahead of what looks like quite a lot of low pressure in the Atlantic. So I think the ECM will very quickly cut off that warmer southwest sea and just return us to pretty unsettled conditions. There's lots of options, you'll notice. Lots of options going on here. Again, just highlights the uncertainty, minimum mole output with how to handle Danielle and Earl. And, uh, you know, where to take those uh, storms and whatnot. Uh, and that is what's causing the uncertainty and the differences between all of the model runs. Uh, this is a bit of broadcast based on that uh, ECM run from Tometro.com. Rain particularly in the west today. Uh, but there will be more wet weather coming and going over the coming days. Even in the south and south east, there should be some rain in form of showers or possibly longer spells of rain coming and going right the way up to day 10. Uh, really, it looks pretty unsettled with uh, spells of rain always, in, uh, you know, always coming and going. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. This will get us to the 13th of September. 21 members of the ECM Ensembles with a ridge of above average heights close to the country of dry weather with that. Um, but it could be quite chilly winds coming in from the northeast direction. That does include and the operational run. However, we know that actually the operational run, anyway, is quite warm with winds coming up from the southwest. So it's kind of a strange um, scenario. And uh, I suppose we've got high pressure just there, but we also have a high pressure down towards France with low pressure just there. That allows those southwest winds to come in. But I think the high around Greenland ice is like the driving factor. So eventually that will pull in 
cooler air from the north. They've got 17 just here with low pressure over top of the country. So obviously that's going to be cool and unsettled. And then we've got 13 with high pressure around Iceland, but also over France, low pressure on the southwest. And so that's probably bringing up some quite warm air from the south, but could be showering. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. That's to be 18th of September. 30 members of the ECM ensemble have us under high pressure then. High pressure centred somewhere towards Denmark, so it should be mainly dry and probably quite warm with winds coming in from the south. And then 21, a minority, oh, should be a significant minority, has us under low pressure and uh, looking very unsettled. So they're completely the opposite to one another. And again, I have to emphasize, that is, you know, the nature of September. We have these systems in the Atlantic. We have uncertainty, not just between model runs, uh, but also between the various ensembles of, of the models as well. And, and that's a good example of what happens in uh, September at this time of year with the developments in the Atlantic. CMS weeks to finally meets a 500 millibar high tonight. It's breaking down into week periods. The first week period will take us from the 3rd to the 9th of September. Coming week will have high pressure to the north and low pressure to the south. We're bringing them in from the east so uh, looks unsettled and uh, quite warm into week two quite a significant change this is the 10th to the 16th of september high pressure builds around Isom, low pressure through here so that takes the most unsettled weather to the south that high pressure to the north is trying to bring in something a little bit cooler from the north and from the northeast as well week three will be the 17th 23rd of september with low pressure around green Isom, high pressure around uh, Spain and so we're into flat westerly flow. Uh, then most are settled in the north. Then high pressure builds in week four, which is 24 to 30th of September. Uh, high pressure building up from the southwest, that's turning us drier and probably warmer as well. I don't think we take that particularly seriously. We've got so much uncertainty from as early as next weekend. But uh, I think we just have to wait and see what's going to happen with the remains of Danielle and Earl. And, uh, and then we see where we go from there. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Double comment, let us know about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to your friends and family to subscribe as well. Uh, and help go to 14.4k. We thank you so very much for doing that. Right, so tomorrow then. Uh, tomorrow, here we go. Uh, winter update day tomorrow. So it all starts, very exciting day. It all starts at 6 a.m. with the 6 a.m. upload. Uh, I'll probably do a 10 to 14 day as well. And then uh, we will premiere at 8 p.m. the first winter 2022-2023 update. I shall watch it with you. I'll be in the live chat. I'll be watching it with you. It'll be at 8 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, it's going to be it's gonna be an interesting watch. It'll be the first long-range video that I have done since uh, the winter forecast of 2000. 21, 2022, so I don't know, you know, how I'm going to do it. I don't know whether I'll remember how to do it. I hope it'll all come back, and uh, I hope it'll go okay. But at this point, I, I, I don't know, you know, how it's going to come out. So it's going to be as much of an adventure for me as it will for you. But uh, here we go again. Winter updates uh, are beginning tomorrow with our premiere at 8 p.m. So I shall see you live uh, then, but a couple of updates videos uh, before that through uh, tomorrow as well. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I've got to get to work on the winter update shortly, but you enjoy the rest of your Saturday, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow for this video. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.